some bread? You got your microphone. You don't have a microphone. Well, it's all right. Then let's just be in part of singing. I'll announce that for the rest of them later and let him do his part. But let's uh, let that lead us in singing our opening hymn. So okay. I, while you remain standing. What can wash our way of sin? Nothing, Nothing but the love of Jesus.
Mark, you people who play flutes always amaze me. How do you get that music out of that? Just, you know, it's amazing. You and Lisa, that when she's playing ours, I, I have trouble even getting my breath, you know. So, that's it. Today is All Saints Sunday. Today is a day of remembering a lot of people that we have in our hearts and in our minds, but we will remember later in the service those that we have lost out of our church family this past year. But also, while we're in setting this up, all of those who are at home uh, watching us, uh, I would suggest you go to the kitchen right at this moment and get you a piece of bread and get you some juice or whatever you would like to drink and bring it to us and sit down here and have worship with us this time. Communion is something that is important for us as Christians because we were told by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to do all of this in remembrance of me. And he says, do it often in remembrance. And if I had my way, we would do it more often than we do. But that gets to be to some a little overbearing and it takes a little bit away from it when we don't really make it an important day. And so that's why once a month we do it here together. And I hope that all of you now have in front of you your communion elements, right? Uh, and you have them there. And I hope that you will take them in, in your hand and be ready as I instruct you. For today we are where Christ was that night in that upper room before he, while he was being betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And in breaking the bread, he lifted it up to God as we lift our little piece of bread up today and offer it up to God and say, Father, bless this, for this is the body of Christ which has been broken for us for the remission of sins and the gift of eternal life. And God didn't want, Christ didn't know to do all of this because he asked his Father, if you can remove this cup from me, Please, but your will be done. And it was his will that the bread was broken and the body was broken. And so today we offer it up and say, Father, bless this bread as we realize it's a symbolizing of what your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, has done for us. And his body was broken and we give thanks to you this day for the healing that it brings in your holy name. We pray. Amen. Likewise, after the evening meal, he took a chalice and he filled it with the wine, which was very common for their day. Ours is the fruit of the vine, but it's the juice of it. And so we offer it up today and say, Father, this is the blood of Christ, which was spilled for us that washes us of all of our sins and feeds in us a pure heart and a clean spirit. And so we offer this to you today and say, bless it and bless us as we partake of it. In his holy name we pray, amen. So you have there, you have your chalice, right? Hold it up, there's a piece of bread in the bottom half of the chalice Pull that tab and take that piece of bread in your hand. Once you have it in your hand, give me your attention. Put it in your mouth and chew upon it and be blessed. For this is the body of Christ, broken for each of us, given to us in remission of our sins. And now lift the top one, the side that has the top half of the chalice, that is the juice. And now, drink this as often as you will in remembrance. For this is the blood of Christ shed for you for remission of sins. Be thankful and give thanks. Amen. And the ushers will be coming by you, and they will at a distance. You can put your Use chalice in their tray and he will take it away from you.
an interesting day. Things are done different. We don't worship the way we used to worship. We're not able to be close to each other. We're not able to hug. And we're all huggers. We can't get together. But today I want us to think a little bit about it. The fact being is, the marvelous thing is, though where we are, God sees us. You think you hide? There's not a hole deep enough that we can hide from God. And so today you have printed in your bulletin the text for today. But it hasn't been read because I'm going to have something to say about it here in a moment. But it's a beatitude, and I wrote my daily about it a little bit today. But to realize that today, here we are, November the 1st, right? 2020. It's a tough time out there. It's a time when, in a couple of days, we will be having the election of the century. And tensions are high all around. Because really, I think what is, there is much at stake in all of this. And it has to do with the way people are feeling right now. And doing this equally, during all of this historic pandemic, COVID-19, it has changed the way we do things. I have my own thoughts on this, but I want everybody to be safe. All right, I'm not into getting on that. That's why you had your temperature checked and your hands sanitized as you came in this morning. And by the way, we also wrote your name down. Do you know that? We wrote your name down for the simple fact that anyone that we know about comes up with corona, which we've had happen in our church, then we want to notify you and let you be safe. But COVID-19 has changed our lives. It changed the way we live. It changed the way we work. It's changed the way we look at life. It's changed absolutely all of our relationships. And it's even changed the way that we worship. Look at your scatter, all right? If we were over in the sanctuary, I'd know where you'd be sitting because you always sit in the same place. Here, it's different. But it's also, it's changed the way we treat each other and the way we look at what we value most. And while many of us continue to at least adjust to the minor changes that we're having to do, uh, such as working from home, I did a charge conference on Zoom. Did you realize that? Nobody was in, everybody was in their home. I was in my study over across the breezeway, but everybody else was in their homes and they were back and forth. It's a new way of doing things. Uh, Weese is very aware of it, and so is Carol. They are involved in this a lot. But, you know, we, we're working from home. We're uh, doing church in a new way. We are even changing our exercise routines. Did you know that? If you don't believe it, watch the TV commercials on what they're advocating you do. They're really wanting you to buy your own exercise machine and be it at home. That means profit for them to make those. But that's it. We have even, uh, you know, how many of you have been gone to a restaurant to eat out on the porch? Or you've been away from everybody else, and, uh, and I was watching all of that, seeing it. We've looked at it. Uh, we're wearing masks. I'm looking out. I'm far enough away that you're not going to catch what I have. But you're wearing them, and we're hand sanitizing ourselves. We're learning to enjoy, I don't know how you are, but... All of a sudden, I have become more aware of the simple things in life. I've been, all of a sudden, I said, why didn't I look at this before? Well, I was doing it, but I really wasn't seeing it. And that's what we're, how many of you are really having those kind of times in your life as I am? And others, uh, let's face it, COVID has really and truly felt like a wicked curse upon all of us. Uh, huge numbers of people are completely out of work, schools are shut down, and businesses are shut down, and trying to make ends meet in many ways, it can be stressful for families today. I don't know that you probably look, and I, I don't know how you are, but I watch the stock market, uh, seeing what it does, and rising and falling, and my financial advisor 
calls us on almost every week and says, hey, I did this. If you need, don't like it, call me and we'll do something else. Mm -hmm. I, my point is, hey, the way the stock's going, I'm not going to fight it. But the stock's being fallen and also coming back. We, we're looking at some things. We don't believe we're coming back. I was looking at some of the stocks that I'm quite interested in. One of them is the one called Home Depot. Did you know that? The reason that is, we have a son that's with them in their corporate offices in Atlanta. I'm quite aware of Home Depot. Do you realize that third quarter, 2020, they blew their projections right out through the ceiling because everybody's doing the, uh, what? Right? They're all. Right? And I was also surprised that Whirlpool has had their biggest quarter than anybody. That one did surprise me. I haven't figured to allow you ladies were buying more washing machines or buying more ovens or whatever, but Whirlpool had a rise in it in the midst of this downtime, you know. And so now we see things coming back and they're surging back and record sales have been there. And so I was excited to that. But the thing that we're looking at today, children are struggling. Uh, we listen to our grandchildren who just just started going back to school, although our grandson has been playing football every week since the fall started. Matter of fact, he played Friday night. Uh, it was a cleanup position. And being a freshman on the varsity football team, you, you don't get in at the beginning a lot of times, but he was there, and they're going well. But they're just now getting back to in-person schooling. You know, they're, they have been on, on, the, on the virtual ones and watching it on. But they're finding out, and our daughter teaches through part of UALR, a division of it, they're having trouble with those that are in college staying attentive and staying online. They're not there. And so they're not doing things. Now it's sort of like one of our cities wound up saying, hey, we're gonna clean this mess up because we're gonna to have to do it a certain way. And people said, well, we don't like the way you're doing it. He says, yes, but our children are not getting the education they need, but we've got to change it. So we're looking at that. And we're looking at that and we're praying for teachers every day because our granddaughter in Denver is having to do it not only on Zoom, but also on and online, but also in person to school. So she has to prepare twice in all of this. There have been those that have during this time that have lost loved ones to this virus. And in some cases, but people live with a constant fear because we have it in pressure to us. And I want us to understand, yes, there's reasons for that, but understand God is walking with us in the midst of all of this. And if God is with me, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to fight the bus saw with God with me. And so I pray that we are. So stress eats away at us, at our peace. And it, it has a way of getting at our well-being on an everyday basis. You know, people long to have social interactions. We, we're longing for that. But we also, in the midst of all this, have a fear. And that's the reason we did all what we did as you come in here today. We don't want you to have fear coming in to worship the Lord in all of this. So the choice between fear and catching something or hosp hospitality or being hospitalized, for instance, or being in loneliness in life or being isolated. I, I look at our people who are in nursing homes who can't get out, can't have visitors. They're isolated. They're removed from it. And, and so it seems to be, in a lot of ways, an unfair predicament that we're in. Grief is rampant, and the fallout of the world is mourning and has caused all of this. And we live in a fractured nation that, that is reeling from unrest and from polarities and also dissensions. And we are people that are hungry uh, for rest. And to the end that we're suffering and living in our disruptions in our lives, we want it to stop. And so today I want you to think about the Beatitudes because really and truly the Beatitudes, Jesus entered into the lives of people that day and he's entering into the lives of ours today. And it must have been a similar feeling for those people that day when he was sitting there on the mount giving his sermon to them. The crowds had gathered there. They went and sat on this hillside outside of Capernaum uh, in the lush fields of northern Galilee. Uh, coming to see him were those harboring hope for something, anything to change. That's where they were. They were tired. You, you getting tired? They were, they, their money was tight. Just, you know, that gets there. Their work was hard, and, and we realize all of this. 
and realize, do you realize their taxes were steep? The disease was rampant. And as I told you in my daily this morning, in my resourcing of this coming up on the Beatitudes, I found where historical sociologists believe that those people were there that day because they came from Nazareth where a virus had just devastated them and they were trying to find a place to be free of it and looking for those. So they went to Capernaum, which was all the Sea of Galilee and other harbor towns that were up there because Rome had been so oppressive and so they, and so were their local governments being oppressive, being told they couldn't do certain things. And faith was rare. They were looking for something. There were revolts were common all around in that time as well as today. There was bloodshed, it was almost an everyday occurrence. The atmosphere was politically charged and commercially challenged. And, and so imagine those people sitting out there on those grassy slopes, listening to Jesus bring this to them. They were curious and they were confused in the midst of it, but when Jesus started to speak, think of the enlightenment filled them. Because he said things like, blessed are the poor in spirit. They were poor, right? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Can you imagine that news? Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meekness to me is walking quietly and carrying a big stick. You can think of that meekness, inheriting the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That's where we are, right? They will be filled. Blessed are the merciful. Do you realize how many merciful people are around us and working with us today? Blessed are the merciful, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart. And there are those among us. They were there on that slope that day. They were pure in heart. They were like here today. For they will see God. And that's what I want us to know that God sees us. Blessed are the pure in heart. But he also said, blessed are the peacemakers. We need them though. For they will be called the children of God. What, what better way to create peace than be a follower of Jesus Christ? and do as Christ did. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sakes. Now it may not be occurring right here in Arkansas, but around the world, Christians, those that are persecuted for their righteousness that they believe in, they are being done away with. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you. You ever had that happen? You and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Now you realize we're hearing a lot of, of false comments and things thrown out everywhere, but he goes on and says, you're hearing this false, being accused falsely on my account. That's what's important for you and me today. Because he said then, rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. When you and I take this communion as we did today, do you realize what we're doing? We're preparing ourselves to step in and receive that gift of eternal life. And that's what he's saying to us. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. And that's where we're headed. I pray for all of us. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. In other words, don't feel like you're the first to have this happen. It's been going on for eons. Blessing, they purvey a gracious, humble, gratitude-filled way of our living that's associated and advocated by our faith. And that's what's important. To live a blessed life, is to find a way to feel God's grace shining upon us. Even in the darkest times. And that's where we've been and where we are.
To be blessed is to be remembered that God is the source of all goodness and grace and that God has his eye upon us. He's watching over us. He's seeing us, especially in our most difficult moments in our life. For God never forgets us. God never forgets you. Remember that in the midst of sorrow, it is our most poignant joy of knowing that we have the most heartfelt hope because of God's love for us. To be blessed is to experience remembrance. The memory of the righteous is a blessing, so the writer of Proverbs says to us. And over these days, as I've written daily with sometimes wondering, God, where am I going to, what am I going to write by the day? And he gives me what to say. As we learn that we have to have the memories and remember those that are wonderful things for us. So in this time, memory and blessings for us are tied together in a kind of unbreakable and brain, all right, in that we remember God, we remember our relationship with God, we remember God's bountiful mercy and love upon us, we remember God's loving care and compassion, and we remember God's personal and intent concern for our well-being. So we experience today, as we think back on all this being All Hallows Day, and we celebrate this All Saints Day, it's an experience of joy and peace. Can you imagine what was occurring on that Galilean hillside as he pronounced these marvelous blessings upon us? He's pronouncing them on us this day. The time of the year when you and I remember those who've gone before us, and those who have taught us, those that have been an example for us, those that have made an indelible impression upon us, and particularly upon our hearts. We remember those beautiful souls with a knot in our heart at times when we think about them. For they have given us such joy. And so when we remember them, we re-experience the joy as though it were yesterday that we just saw them and talked with them and experienced that time with them. So at this moment, let's remember those who are part of us and this past year have transferred their church membership to the church trials. And the very first one we lost in this past year is Tommy Best. Eddie Higgins. Lewis Fish. Helen Peel. Robert Odin. Patty Higginbaum. today, worshiping you and celebrating the lives of those that meant so much to each of us and have transferred all, remembering all the joys they brought us, all the talents that they have trained us with, all of the wonderful personal love that came from them, the grace that flowed from them, from you through them to us, we feel this day. So we these things in these thoughts, Lord, to give you thanks and bless you for all your blessings upon them and upon us. In your holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn.
grab it there. That is going to lead us in singing in the first and the fifth verse of the Church of One Population. Welcome all. In his name we pray. Amen. 